so everything's working accurately. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back live with Louis B. Free Radio Show, Brain Food from the Heartland. And I have two wonderful guests, one new and one returning. And Jeff Manuel, I'm going to start with you. Delighted to good, have you. Good morning, Louis. How are you? I'm well. And I, I know my, my audience knows you, but for new people, a little bit about yourself and what you do. Okay, I am the Community Relations and Multimedia Specialist. And once again, I'm just really excited about today's show, because once again, Louis, even you said prior to our show, with all our viewers out there and listeners of the love of PBS. And so we were most fortunate this year to partner with PBS Western Reserve on several different programs. And the reason we're on today is to highlight another program that's in progress and coming up that children can attend at the libraries. And with that, Louis, I'll segue with your introduction to your next guest. All right, and that's libraryvisit.org, of course, for more information. Jeff Good, welcome, good morning. Thank you, Louis. Thank you and you and Jeff for both uh, reaching out and, and uh, inviting me to be part of your program. Well, I'm Jeff and I are both delighted. I can say that, right, Jeff? Man, no, no, please do that or, once again, uh, you know, delighted. again, let, let Jeff, you know, tell us about PBS Western Reserve for all our fans out there and everything. So, you know, if Jeff you don't and, mind, I'm Jeff, sorry, Jeff. Yeah, a little bit ahead. about you and then what you do with PBS. A little bit about yourself, um, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, I'm the I'm the Chief Education Technology Officer for PBS Western Reserve. I've been here um, August 20th. Will be my wrapping up my 16th year. Um, part of what I not even part of what I do, predominantly what I work with is uh, the educational side of PBS. So we work very closely um, on our, you know, training K-12 teachers in integrating technology in a, about a 10 county area. Uh, we've got a very, I think a very robust early learning program. Um, we work very closely with family child care providers, helping them achieve their step up to quality status through our Ohio Ready to Learn project. And then we've got a series of these little, I call them little, they're, they're, uh, they get much larger as we go, our little, what we call uh, learning initiatives and learning outreach um, that includes programs like what we'll talk about here in a bit with Cyber Chase, but um, we have a very strong working relationship with PNC Bank and on a regular basis we do, a, a usually yearly, we do a Be My Neighbor Day where Daniel Tiger comes out and we focus on, on literacy with our little ones. So it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks. We're kind of branching out a little bit into community learning and, and helping folks understand what it would take to, to start doing podcasts and um, and webinars right. and, and how to get into that. So that's that's me in a nutshell. A little, a, about you, how did you get to PBS, if you don't mind? Well, that's a, I, I grew, I've grown up in the area. I'm a, I've lived in Northeast Ohio, I had an opportunity. I've worked for several, um, I worked for Youngstown State for about six, seven years. Um, I worked for uh, the Trumbull County Educational Service Center. And uh, then I went to Michigan for about five years and I worked for what, what really constitute an educational service center in Michigan, work with them on a distance learning network and working with teachers, integrating technology. And, um, you know, I'm a Northeast Ohio guy. So after about five years, I had promised my family, my kids were little. So I moved back to the area um, and was very fortunate within a very short period of time, they had an opening at, at well, what would have been PBS 45 49 back then for right, yeah. a director of education. So I applied for it and was very fortunate to get the job and it has evolved um, dramatically over the 15, 16 years that I've been part of it. Wow. That's, that's great. I just think, uh, and I was telling you off air what a fan I am of uh, PBS Western Reserve. And I, I started to think after we spoke uh, off air that I, how many decades I, I can't, I can think of some like, old shows are you being served some really old british comedies that you would run that really got really got into and enjoyed them very much and that was you know louis that was one of our larger our most successful audiences and still continues is our our kind of our britcom audience yeah um you know that that continues to have a very strong following 
That's great. And I, I'm a big fan of most Britcoms or some that, you know, but I, I, I always, when you put a new one on and Broadchurch, by the way, uh, that you run also, I would highly recommend that to folks. I mean, you you watch an episode or two of Broadchurch, you're in, you're in for, you're waiting for the next week for the next episode. I'm sorry, I'm going on and on about my love for PBS. Let's talk a little bit about the, the cyber chase, green it up. Well, um, Cyber Chase Greened It Up is, is connected with our um, probably one of PBS's, one of their longest running programs. It's been running about 17 plus years. We currently air Cyber Chase on Sundays at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, it kind of, it doesn't kind of, it features a group of kids that um, really emphasis on developing math and STEM skills. And uh, so I wanna say two years ago, about a little bit before the pandemic then, um, WNET, which is the, the, um, the PBS station that creates Cyber Chase, offered up, they were kind of taking a, a side direction with Cyber Chase and they were creating the Green It Up series. And that was really um, connected to Cyber Chase, but yet more environmental type issues. So we applied for a grant and the grant really allowed us to uh, develop our collaborations with our local entities. And then the pandemic hit. And so all of a sudden we weren't yeah. able to do in-person training. So we did um, the Cyber Chase series totally virtual. Um, it mm -hmm. took a while because we really didn't know um, WNET out of New York really didn't know what to, you know, what to do with all this. So we did um, in 2020, the summer of 2021, uh, we did last year at this time, we did a series of virtual trainings um, to our boys and girls clubs. I mean, it was very different. And then we reapplied for the grant this year uh, in hopes of finally being able to do these in person and our collaborative partners um, just so happen to be, you know, the wonderful folks at the public library. We've got a great working relationship with the Stark library and those folks there and their branches, as well as the OWA science center. So the, you know, the main idea of it is that we do um, we're focusing on environmental issues in hopes of at the end of we, you know, we deliver, five different modules, um, things like pollinators and, and veggie and learning about container gardening and learning about composting, which I, I laugh because I finally learned about. My wife watches all of these new things that I do and <laughs> chuckled about now that I'm into composting. And I told her, believe it or not, you can buy red wigglers um, worms on Amazon oh, for your composting. Really? Oh, on absolutely. Amazon? On Amazon. Wow. So I've learned a lot. But um, but then at the end, the hope is that when, when the kids get to the last module, um, they will kind of have a call to action. And the call to action will be what now that I've learned about pollinators and now that I've learned about composting and I've learned about container gardens and appreciating nature, you know, now what am I going to do in my community? So that's the whole idea, you know, that the program themselves itself is geared towards ages six through eight, but we've we've kind of run the gamut of ages. I and mean, we've had some great conversations with three and four year olds. We've had some great conversations with nine, 10 and 11 year olds. Cause it, the end game, I guess, if you want to use that term, is that, that those kids and, and sometimes your parents are there too, which I really love. Wow, um, that's great. They learn a little bit of, you know, they learn about the environment, but they, but they definitely are looking at a call to action. That, that's great. So I would, to attend these, I would need a grandchild or borrow borrow someone else's grandchild to come. Yes, I'm yes. just kidding. No, that's and, it's and really that's interesting. A, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's no, 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 no. It's 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 a great program. We we've learned a lot over the years. I mean, it's it's I think the hardest part is getting people back in the concept of in person. You know, I think that's one of the struggles yeah. that we're having a little bit this year is that um, you know, people are still a little tentative, you know, and it's because yeah. of that, you know, and I don't want to just you know, detract it all from what the library has done, but we're actually going to offer these sessions virtually at the end of the month also. So for the folks that kind of thought about going to the library or thought about going sure, to, oh, yeah. wow, you know, they can attend those, you know, and we've abbreviated them enough that, uh, you know, they can have, they can have dinner at, you know, five thirty, six o'clock, and then they can attend those virtually from six to seven o'clock, um, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the last of July. Well, that's great. That's great. So uh, uh, people in their 70th year could uh, 
attend virtually, correct? <laughs> oh, absolutely. We'd, okay, we'd, that's we'd love that's to good. have you. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to. I, I, I'm fascinated by it. The more I read about it, I just, I've got to mention when you talk about pollinators, and I'll hold this book up in front of this camera, and my audience knows you guys. This was a, a wonderful, I don't know if you can see it, but I had the author on, uh, Teresa Parrish on, in the, the Adventures of Johnny Butterfly Seed. And I learned so much from her about, about butterflies and, and the, of course the importance and bees, mentioning bees for, for our food. And it was, it's been concerning for me not seeing, I used to see bees a lot. I'm just not seeing them like, like I remember seeing them before. And when, when I see a bee, like on a clover in the front yard or wherever, I get very excited. It's like, oh yes, there's a bee. Because again, without the bees, without the, the pollinators, we don't have our food. And Louis, that's really what we, we work with. Uh, you know, and I've learned a lot too. I'm not a bat fan at all, but you know, a bat <laughs> is a pollinator. And yes. I have to get past my phobia to be able to work with the kids to say, you know, bats are our friends, um, but you're right. And we, what we try to incorporate in each of the modules is we're kind of adjusting our approach to some of these to fit some of our, our future grants. But, you know, we, we kind of work within the module, but then we also, because of the work that we did with the public library and a Ben Franklin project that we did, I've learned a lot about beginning to integrate a read aloud book. So, you know, in each of our modules, we include a read aloud we do a read aloud in person. I'll do the read aloud and we do virtual. You know, our, our read aloud for the pollinators is a book called Give Bees a Chance. Oh, I love and that. I've learned it's a great book. It's a funny book, um, but it really gives an overview of all the different types of bees and, and their work as, as pollinators. So um, that's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We just try to connect, you know, so that's our, and in, in, in the virtual world, um, when folks sign up for that, our, our hope is that folks will um, go to the library ahead of time. And if that book is available, they can bring it home and we can read aloud together. And we can all sing. All we are saying is give bees a chance. I love the title. You reminded me, Jeff Good, of uh, an author I had on. And this has got to be probably almost 20 years ago that uh, wrote a book called A World Without Bees. And it impacted me so much when I or reading that about what it would be like and the importance of it. Now we know they truck bees around to pollinate things and we've got to do our part. And everybody can do, if everybody does a little, others don't have to do a lot. If everybody's learning how to attract them and what they need to plant, et cetera, then we'll be hopefully okay. So yeah, well, the, go oh, ahead, I'm Jeff, sorry. I'm sorry. No, the first session to this, Louis, I attended um, Cyber Chase last week. It was at the Boardman Library. And thanks to Miss Pam and Miss Hawley at PBS, they kind of were, the, if you will, presenting this program to the children. And as Jeff said, uh, Miss Pam started with the story, the B book and everything and getting the kids engaged there and they're interacting they're asking questions and once again you have a group of kids there there was 10 at the time they're between you know five years old and eight years old and it's just amazing once again how connected they are already and how Wonderful. much again what they do know already because Pam's kind of quizzing them, giving them the books. Oh. There's a whole great presentation again, and I invite grandparents or parents to bring their grandkids out, their children out, because the next session's coming up this Friday at the Boardman Library. And again, it's just a two hours packed full of activities and knowledge, and once again, in video interaction. And then once again, the activities that the children put hands on and I always like again it's one thing to tell somebody about something it's another thing to read something but actual to have hands-on yeah. learning That's that the they best. do they do different activities related to a bat as Jeff said bats I once again my fearful thing and bees were kind of fearful in the sense that you know you think I'm just right. going to get stung by it or a bat's going to land in my hair but again the kids get to play the role of a bat and how it oh, pollinates wow. and so it's really cool just to watch them adding different things and activities and Jeff go ahead chime in on some Let of me, the rest of just this. give me a second I just I I think 
because of the movies, the old black and white movies. Uh, one of them, I remember a bat coming over somebody's head, you know, it was, and they, that, you know, that's probably. No, I, think, I, said, I think it was, I think it was thanks to Alfred Hitchcock and the birds. <laughs> oh, that, that, well, there's another one. That's a favorite of mine also, also. Uh, Jeff Good, tell us a little bit more about the programs. You know, I think the exciting part, and, and Jeff touched on it, I love the activities. The pollinator one is a lot of fun, and it's it, to try to describe it very simply is, um, you know, we have maybe three or four, four or five different bowls of, and in these bowls are, are pom-poms. So let's say they're blue pom-poms. And then we've uh, food colored sugar that's also blue. And so we have these five different colors. And then we have a contest for 60 seconds. The kids have to, they get a, they get a, a pair of tweezers and, and they get an empty cup. And their idea is to go to each of those colored areas, which are flowers, and they're to grab as many different, go to each of the areas as they can and grab as many different colors as they can. And what's interesting about it, when it's all done, you know, we have them look at their, their cup and we see who wins. Then we have them look at the, the pom-pom and the sugar, the colored sugar. They begin to see, okay, in the blue now, I see that there's some yellow in there right now mixed in with the blue sugar. I've got the pink sugar and I see some blue mixed in there and kids really start to understand, okay, that's how that works with the pollinators. When they go from flower to flower, you know, they're pulling the nectar for, the, for, for their needs, but they're also doing the, they're, they're pollinating along the way. Again, that's fantastic for the kids. Jeff Manuel, how did this partnership come about? Oh, I don't know, Jeff, you can even chime back to me once again, that we've kind of, you know, once again, PBS Western Reserve, and we've done different things throughout the years with PBS. But again, they started off this year that Jeff had mentioned prior was uh, if anyone got the chance to watch and still can watch the program, the Ben Franklin Project. And that's the first one that we kind of teamed up with PBS this year. And once again, it's just, again, it's those community partnerships and being in, in ahead of community relations and everything. It's just so critical to make those partnerships. But once again, PBS and all the efforts they're doing and everything, well, they're talking to our same audience. And yeah. so it's like, you know, it's a natural. And yeah, again, some people great. don't realize some of the assets that we have here in Northeastern Ohio and the great bed of knowledge we have. And it's a matter of just picking up a phone sometimes or saying, hey, you know, you're doing this, you're doing this. You know, how do, how do we team up with you on here? And once again, it's, it's a win-win for both of us. We're both after that same educational audience. That's and, great. And Jeff, go ahead. Jeff, said, Jeff, go ahead. Jeff says it best. It's, a, it's kind of, it's a collaborative, it's a partnership. Um, you know, we, we had talked in the past and I know, um, you know, here, there and everywhere, we've talked about these collaborative opportunities. I know that Pam often, and I, I don't know which branches that she has done the Ohio Ready to Learn training back when they were in person, um, but she's utilized some of the library branches for that. But, you know, as, as Jeff said, I mean, we, we received a grant from WETA to promote the Ben Franklin documentary that was produced by uh, Ken Burns back in early April. And we kind of took a little different approach. Everyone else was kind of doing these. And we did the, we did some of the same things, but then we also integrated a, a children's side to it. And we did a series of in-person and virtual trainings that talked about Ben Franklin and, and his connection with the kite. And then we took, um, we took that connection and said, okay, when you know, what's the connection between kites and airplanes? And so we did another session on that. And just a couple Saturdays ago, you know, with the graciousness of the, the library, we were actually at the main branch and we had a go fly a kite with PBS Western Reserve. We couldn't ask for it. When I left the house, I thought this isn't going to work out. And then with, by the time we got going, it was a wonderfully windy day. Uh, it wasn't overly hot. Um, everyone that came out got a kite and to watch people fly kites was just, you know, they could decorate the kites and then we had paper airplanes and we gave away Ben Franklin books and we, um, we've had a local, when we do our uh, Be My Neighbor days, um, we have a local artist that actually created a, a caregiver coloring book for us and we give those out whenever we can for kids so it's, it was a great event I really enjoyed it and, and then we worked collaboratively with the library to, to do a kind of a book study virtual that talked about books 
uh, for our early learners related to Ben Franklin and books for our kind of our older learners. And so, yes, it's this is definitely a uh, a collaboration that will continue. It and as Jeff said, it make it made sense. It was sometimes just taking that first step. That's what when you say that about the kites, it made me think of how long it's been since I've flown yes. the kite. Again, decades. Oh, and I, if somebody said to me, "Go fly a kite," yes. I'd probably say, "I'd love to." <laughs> I've got to, seriously. I mean, now I now I'm inspired to to fly a kite someday. At my well, ancient age, we can we can certainly get you one of our uh, one of our kits, and you can decorate your kite. And that'd be and great. We'll, oh, seriously, I would love that. But that, okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> No, once again, with the, with the children having so much fun, but once again, I'm always going to be a child at heart. You're seeing the adults in the background and grandma and grandpa that they're taking much as much enjoyment in it and the design and everything. And once again, yeah, who doesn't want to fly a kite? It's like, yeah. how cool is this? It's, yeah, yeah. The, Go and ahead. once again, you can fly a kite, but when also always connecting it back to learning. Right. And again, just things that you might take for granted or different things that you know you, you know we both say we all say you know I, I learn something new every day and it's just yeah. exposing yourself to it and just keeping open it's amazing which you know what the kids pick up on what I pick up on absolutely I and uh, like the, the the wild card of that day was getting up and having little or no breeze. And I thought, okay, yeah, I can give them the kites, I can give them the airplanes, <laughs> but we them. don't have the wind. And you know, someone someone listened because I tell you, when we got to the library, um, it actually was a little bit too windy because there was a couple little promotional things we normally put up for an event <laughs> that I knew we were going to go airborne. So, uh, but it was just as Jeff said. It's wonderful for us to see whether it's at the the you know fly kite day. Um, we've got a be a be my neighbor day in collaboration with the Oh Wow uh, Silly Science Sunday. So Daniel Tiger, I think that's uh, Sunday the 18th of September, um, and Daniel Tiger will be there. And um, I love watching parents. Daniel Tiger is like the new rock star. Honestly, I mean when we we bring him into an event, it's it's. Like you mentioned, Louis, your chaos, you would you would fit in well with Daniel Tiger because both right? of you, it's just <laughs> chaos. But uh, we really enjoy, and, and Jeff said it best. I mean, I we love the kids getting excited, but we love the parents getting excited. And we also love when both, when the parents come to us and say, you know, I, did, I didn't, you know, in difference to, to your comment, Louis, about all of the great programs, we still have folks that go, I didn't realize you had a program like this. I didn't realize you did events like this. We didn't realize you've got these educational initiatives. And so that's exciting for us too, because we're, we're just more than a, you know, if it isn't enough, what we do on the broadcast side, we're, we're also very heavily entrenched in doing these educational initiatives that relate to what we do on air. That's fantastic. And by the way, anybody out there that wants some suggestions on PBS, what or what I like, they can certainly email me and I'd be happy to, to sh share those with you. Again, I, I'm always looking at the PBS with some reserve schedule for. Oh, so, yeah, some... that's just the and again, uh, let's uh, update folks as far as the cyber chase programs that are coming. Um, so Boardman yeah. Library um, this coming Friday. 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. to Jeff. noon sorry. from 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, that's session number two of that program, which is involving composting and appreciating nature. And then there's also two programs coming up with both sessions to the Poland Library and Poland Library. Their cyber chase will be July 21st and July 28th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, inviting those adults to bring their children out, grandkids out and again. And I, I don't know, Jeff, will Miss Pam and Miss Holly be doing these as well, to your knowledge? Yes, they will. And, and what we've done, we've kind of adjusted a little bit because we're trying to figure out folks' schedules, so to speak. So um, the training that will be at the Boardman Library this Friday will we're going to encapsulate the uh, modules one, two, and three from the first session. Okay. So all those kids are, even if they weren't there for the first time they're around, they're going to learn about pollinators in an abbreviated version. They're going to learn about flower gardens. They're going to learn about 
the veggie and container gardens. And then we're going to move into the composting and appreciating nature with the hope that when they leave there, you know, the big finale idea is that um, we sit with the, you know, Miss Pam and Miss Holly will sit with those children and their parents and say, okay, what does this mean to you? What are you going to do in your community? Are you going to, you want to put up a sign that says, save the pollinators? Do you want to start a, a container garden? Do you want to start a flower garden? Um, you know, or just even just do composting at home. So that's the hope, you know, that we have with all of these. And um, the Poland, you know, we kind of added those just recently to kind of try to try to offer some more. We kind of worked at things in a in a quick way. And so hopefully we can uh, add some more along the way, more sessions. The program itself that's wraps great. up the end of July. So that's what we kind of, we're kind of under the gun. And then, like we said earlier, if you go on our PBS Western Reserve website, you also, if you follow the Cyber Chase logo, you'll see that we're also offering this um, virtually to the, the last week of July. That's fantastic. Uh, that's And if you want to register for the programs at the library, of course, go to libraryvisit.org, libraryvisit.org. And as you said about the PBS Western Reserve website. For that the, once the again, Reserve. just sort of knowledge wise, too, that you also, you know, with the whole cyber chase thing comes activity cards and all different things that you can eat right off the PBS site. You can get that it has a whole lesson plan and it's just it's wow. a wonderful guide to read along with as well that's great and you were just showing it for listeners you were just sh showing that yeah like, sorry looks, I, looks, I forget no, about no, this no, no. radio I, <laughs> I well this it's everything these days you know it's it's everything the young yeah. techies tell me what buttons to push and and i do as i'm told most of the time except when i forget something but i want to say hi to jack at the shop around the corner downtown also when you think about these partnerships i mean these are going to be ongoing Correct, Jeff Good. Absolutely, absolutely, and and oftentimes, you Wonderful. know, it's it's once once they start, and I used this term the other day. You know, positives and negatives about grant supported projects is that you know to kind of use a semi biblical term, grants begat grants. You know, once you get a grant, you're more likely to get additional grants, and and in all honesty, what the grant folks look at are your collaborative partners. You know, what are you know, are you collaborating with the local libraries? Are you are you collaborating with, you know, the boys and girls clubs and those types of things? And um, we've got a big project that that's being funded through uh, uh, the Ohio Department of Education that we're we've sent out a press release on, but it's called Ohio Learns 360, and it is really um, we'll be continuing that collaboration with the library. Jeff doesn't even know about this yet. I'm I don't mean to put him on the spot. <laughs> but we're definitely going to be looking at the libraries to um, help us initiate that project that will really focus on um, the, the kindergarten through fifth grade learner that that experienced some learning loss during the right. pandemic oh, and how wow. we can get those students uh, back up to speed. We did a series of webinars. Um, they started back last January, February, um, where I where I reached out to elementary, middle, high school um, administration and talked to them about because that was a big issue. You know, all these kids were coming back to school and um, there was a learning loss there due to the pandemic and what were all these great programs that locally folks are doing. And so um, you'll hear more about Ohio Learns 360. I think we're already running a, a spot on the air about it that's a little generic right now, um, but it, it really will, you know, incorporate um, some family webinars, some in-person trainings, we're calling them uh, Camp in a Box, for folks that are um, that are after school specialists or out of school specialists, so we've got a lot of other really cool things happening. And you know, Louie, when you mentioned about how important those collaborations are, it's wonderful. That's that just works right into Beautiful. what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. And I, I, these collabor this collaboration is wonderful between PBS Western Reserve and, by the way, PBSWesternReserve.org. I've got a direct link up to the page where the uh, cyber chase green it up is also. And of course, libraryvisit.org. I think about the, again, collaborations like this. And we were telling of just now, Jeff Good, about helping kids that have lost, that fell behind a bit through the pandemic. And I've read some, I was gonna say frightening, disturbing statistics. And I'm really delighted to know that you're going to have these programs because it's 
really disturbing, some of the numbers. Louis, if you get a chance on our website, there's actually a, a webinar series. We called it the um, best practices for uh, dealing with the pandemic learning gap. It's on our website too. And it was very enlightening. We did, um, we talked to administration at elementary, middle, high school. We talked to folks um, that, that were dealing with that high school to college transition students. And then our last webinar we did was really with the, you know, those special needs students and how those entities were dealing with that pandemic learning gap. So we have a series of, of webinars on there as well as podcasts that we've done related to that. I think it's exciting because, you know, we have some folks out there, a lot of folks out there in the education world from teachers to administrators that recognize that there is a learning loss and a learning gap and they are putting in the extra time for that's our wonderful. students. And that that's the most, I think that's the most fulfilling part when I got done with those webinars, I must've said, oh, wow, maybe a couple, couple 10, 20 times, because, you know, these teachers are taking time out of their regular schedule to help, you know, from these summer programs. Um, it, it, there's a lot of great things going on, great efforts out there. And you're right, Louis, it, it, it is disturbing and it's, it and you understand how it could happen, that learning loss. Sure. Um, but our but our districts are, wow, really stepping forward. You know, we had the opportunity. Uh, I love working with the folks at the ESC of, of Eastern Ohio and Dr. Hostetler and her staff. They were wonderful to work with to begin to talk about all of the resources that, that the ESC has been providing um, to help she's, districts deal with that learning loss. Yeah, Dr. Tracy Hostetler is amazing. She's been She's been visited me in studio a number of times and, and via Zoom, and she's it's it's incredible what people are doing. Uh, no, together. once again, I I always say that you know once again I, my hats off to many folks, but again I always look at teachers and nurses in a special light that once again they're the front line people. And so That's between right. like PBS Western Reserve and the library and other organizations local, we have the assets that we can give these folks. And again, it's just a matter of getting, you know, we have library, you know, teacher toolkits. And again, those are the people that are on the front lines. That's we right. have all the resources. Let's just give the front line folks what they need. And again, it's amazing what that collaboration does. That's wonderful. You know, when you say that, and Jeff, what you're saying about them getting caught up. I've spoken with area, I don't want to say area teachers. And last week I had an author on who is a, a tutor's kid. We were talking about reading and how far behind they get. And when I hear someone say that they're teaching third and fourth grade and some of the kids are reading at the kindergarten level, how do you get caught up? So if you get them early, like you're, you're doing now with this program of getting caught up through pandemic, because they're just going to fall further and further behind. And we certainly don't want to issue a graduation uh, diploma to a student that's unable to read it. And I know that sounds harsh, but it's, it's a reality with some. Those are the extreme cases, but, you know, and if you can't read, I just, how do you do anything? How do you start to fall behind, you're going to fall further behind. Uh, you're going to resent school maybe because, forgive me my little diatribe here, you're going to resent school because uh, you can't manage it, you can't handle it, you're not there, so it could be disruptive behavior, whatever, whatever, skipping school, uh, whatever. And it's so important to get these kids caught up. And again, for me, with the library, I can learn anything. You know, again, Jeff Mamiel, you know this, everybody knows this there's a lot of it yes there's a lot of information online and much of it is i want to clean uh, inaccurate inaccurate and that's where the librarians at the public library of young san mahoney county can direct you to what's the good sites where the real information is no but the other fun thing that once again you know, obviously due to covid and all that and coming hopefully back out of covid on the other side is just the what I see in the interaction with children, again, what, what they totally missed was, okay, one, an education, but two, the social interaction good skills. Point. Really good that, point, yeah. That it's very, you know, once again, I'm, I'm heading out. Oh, by the way, if you have some chance time today, there's a 
magic show this afternoon at Campbell Library in their community literacy center. And again, what it's time, seeing what the, time is it? Uh, it's two o'clock. Right. It's in fact, there's one show coming up at 10 o'clock, which I'm about to run to shortly. Yeah. So we're going to yeah. go see a magic show. But again, where I'm getting the point is to seeing the kids interact yeah. in that so personal that interaction show. with everybody yeah. is a vital part to learning as well. That's and again, a really it, good point, the social it takes, aspect. It takes right. away the intimidation factor and it gives kids a lot more confidence. I think, again, we talked about this many times before, Louis, that again, if there's something, you know, if I could take a, can a class in confidence building, I think a lot of it starts there with, you know, once again, you know, people that might be shy or intimidated that I don't, my reading skills aren't that good, or my child, it's like, no, don't, don't, you're not alone out there. Yeah. There's, there's help right. for you. You know, even if you come to the library or there, there's help here. And that's what we're here for. Yeah, lots of help. And again, libraryvisit.org and pbswesternreserve.org. So if we can, I, Jeff, I know you've got a split. If we want to summarize it, um, both you guys, Jeff, good, a little bit about the programs. Yeah, once again, we have, um, it, it started out with Ben Franklin, but right now we've got our, our Cyber Chase Green It Up activities. Um, as Jeff said, um, this is the Jeff and Jeff and, and Louie show, I guess. <laughs> um, but as Jeff said, I mean, we're, we're uh, doing a session two at the Boardman Library on Friday, but we're going to kind of encapsulate, you know, and the, and the big, Green, big purpose yeah. behind Green It Up is really getting our kids um, environmentally aware and in hopes of, you know, as, as Jeff said, I mean, they're, they're, they're educating, we're learning a lot from those kids too, but in hopes that they'll, they'll recognize, you know, we're bringing it back around, you know, the importance of pollinators and, and how that works within the environment. Um, and then we're doing another uh, two sessions at the Poland library and that comes up the 20, I think that's a 20, 21st and 28th. I got to look at my schedule and that's a Correct. Thursday. 21st. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. 21st and 28th from 28th 11 to, from 1, 11 to 1. Yep. So we'd love to see folks out. And for those folks that can't make that any of those two, we'd love to still have you participate. We've got some virtual offerings. And if you go to the bottom of our greened it up page, Louis, thanks so much for posting that. Um, you'll see that we've got our virtual schedule and we're doing that via zoom. Um, we're trying that's to make great. it as, um, I am supposed to do a presentation at a, at a conference coming up in September. And part of my big push is how do you make something, um, uh, a virtual session more face-to-face? -face? And I, and so we're really trying yeah. to figure out those elements. A lot of it's just engagement strategies of how you can do things that, yeah, you're not there in person. You know, the reality is the virtual, the virtual connection is they're not going away. So what can we do to still excite people about being part of that uh, in a virtual way? So we've got virtual sessions. We try to do them in a way that you get done with dinner and you can you can participate as a family, learn a little bit about Green It Up and Cyber Chase. And, and um, I think I've talked too much about it. I just love the program. No, it's, it's wonderful. And I am delighted to have you both. Uh, Jeff Mamula, as always, uh, librivisit.org. And Jeff Good, it's been a blast talking with you. And I would love to do this get caught up down down the road a little bit the programs are very very exciting and very important. no once again louis i said that we'll have to schedule a time again with jeff that we can if jeff you have the time too that i'd even like to go down a trip down memory lane and pbs and the whole history and that it's just fascinating I would love, again, yeah the, that's a great the idea diff, the different programs that they've had on there and i've seen over the years and even rewatched now thanks to you know streaming services and things like that it's just incredible programming and and louis i'd love to and both louis and jeff I'd, I'd love to come back and talk about that ohio learns 360 project I once i get a little bit more detail in place but we're definitely wanting to get the word out and it's probably yes it's probably one of the largest educational projects initiatives that we've done since i've come on board you know 16 years ago so would definitely love to you know talk a little bit more about but what all's involved with that and just keep you all updated. I just, I, I appreciate the, the opportunity to talk to Louis, to your audience and, and you. Jeff, I can't say enough about the collaboration with the library. It's so important. Again, coming it's, back at you. 
pbsforsetreserve.org, libraryvisit.org. I've got the links up at louisfreeshow.com. I think louisbefree.com is the new one. And of course, wfmj.com. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank, Thanks, thank you, Louis. Thank Jeff, you, Jeff. Thank you, Louis. Thank you. I, Jeff, Bye -bye. I hope I got you out in time. Thanks, guys. Good Thanks deal. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you.